Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Easter. <clears throat> Happy Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, so to be with you today, um, still flying high from last weekend. I, I'm just going to say it. Last weekend in this building, there were more than 1,100 people for the 10 o'clock mass, more than 400 in the overflow in the hall. So we had 1,500, more than 1,500 people here on Easter Sunday at this hour. They are out there. The harvest is out there for us to go get. So welcome harvesters to today's celebration of divine mercy. Um, if you're joining us online today, welcome to you. I'm Father Mark Wiesner, pastor here in the Catholic community of Pleasanton. Uh, thank you for joining us online for our worship today. Uh, if you're with us for the very first time, we've provided a couple links for you there. Whether you're with us on Facebook or on YouTube, if you look around a bit, you'll find a link that will give you the readings for this Divine Mercy Sunday and this octave day of Easter, as well as the music for today. So please bring those on up. Uh, those of you who are here in the church with me, I hope that you were handed one of the yellow worship aids as you came in today. I invite you to pick those up. Let me hand it to Hannah, who are us up today. How are you today? Good, thank good, happy you. happy Easter. Well, good morning, church. Um, let's warm up our voices first with the responsorial psalm. So if you could please turn your worship aid to the responsorial psalm. We're going to warm up with Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks Now we're going to turn to the preparation of the gift song. It's the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, because today is Divine Mercy Sunday. And we're going to learn the Decade Prayer, which we will sing at least 20 times today. Excellent. So, <laughs> for the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake that 10 times for one decade and then later another 10 times for a second decade. And we've already done it three times now so we're underway. <laughs> right. <laughs> so good. Good. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to invite you to please take a moment to make sure your cell phone is off or on silent. I do know some people like to follow the readings on their phone. Just make sure that that's silent so we can pray undisturbed today. And um, as I've always said, it's much more difficult. Let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and our minds to truly be present here on this Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God and we'll begin our worship today in just a few moments.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the love of God, the grace and peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this joyful octave day of Easter, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water that he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us today as a memorial of our baptism. May God help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and still the greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. He also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water, you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter into up with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. i 
heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Please be seated and let us be attentive to the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded to them all. There was no needy person among them for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures for let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is was hard pressed and was falling but the Lord helped me my strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just give thanks 
thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, 
His disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Once again, happy Easter. Easter. On this octave day of Easter, this second Sunday of Easter, or as Saint Pope John Paul II named it, Divine Mercy Sunday. This day when Christ appears for the second time to his disciples in the upper room, and this time Thomas is with them. Divine Mercy Sunday. You have heard me say many times in the past that Pope Francis has told us that mercy is the primary way that we experience God's love for us. The primary way we encounter God's love for us is in his mercy for us. And the definition of mercy I love that works so well, I think, is mercy is what happens when compassion meets suffering. When compassion meets suffering. And so the primary way that we encounter God's love for us is in his compassion coming to meet our suffering. And indeed, if you reflect upon the life of Jesus, the whole reason he came was one of mercy, was of compassion, meeting a suffering human race, suffering from sin. And when you keep that in mind and you look at his life, you see it really is sort of the motivational force behind everything that Jesus does throughout his life, his teaching, his preaching, his healing, and certainly, of course, his death. And we begin to see today his resurrection that he comes in mercy to those who are suffering. And in that, they experience God's great love for them. During this octave week of Easter, we have heard at daily mass all sorts of stories of the appearance of Christ. I mean, with the resurrection of Jesus, there is suddenly, for the first time, something new under the sun since it was created. Something new has arrived on the scene. And, of course, the resurrected Jesus, just as Jesus, when he was a mortal human being, uh, isn't random what he does. He doesn't just pop in on people to surprise them or scare them or anything. God is very deliberate, not random, in what God does. And so the resurrected Christ appears to people in mercy, people who need compassion people who need love. I mean, this week, the stories we have heard have all been of individuals who needed his appearance and his love and mercy. We, we heard, first of all, about Mary of Magdala, which, of course, kind of makes sense. Mary of Magdala had experienced Christ's great mercy and compassion toward her while he was still alive. And um, she's one of the women who supported him in his travels. She was one of the very few people who remained with him on Calvary um, when he was uh, crucified. And of course, she was so overcome with grief at the loss that even when the disciples left the tomb on that Easter Sunday morning, she stayed there, just lost, looking for him. The body wasn't there, grieving so much that, yes, when he did show up to her, she thought he was the gardener until he spoke her name in love and compassion. Mary. And that moment changed everything for her. And he said, go, 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 go to the apostles, let them know. She becomes what we call the apostle of the apostles. But in her grief and loss, Christ comes with compassion. We also heard this week 
about Jesus appearing to Peter, the leader of the apostles, who I think probably needed some special attention in his life. Um, Jesus must have known how much Peter needed mercy. I mean, the first appearance we heard this week was that Peter had gone back to his life as a fisherman, right? What do you do when the person who gave your life meaning and purpose around whom you had built your last three years is suddenly dead and gone? You go back to the life you had before. And Peter's fishing. And Jesus shows up, and much as he did in the same time, the first time he ran into Peter, he has Peter put out the nets, and he gets a catch of fish. And in that, Peter's like, hey, it's the Lord. And then, of course, the conversation continues. Because as first among equals, leader of the apostles, we all know what happened on that Good Friday. How Peter had publicly and loudly denied his friend and master. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I do not know the man, we know Peter said. What that meeting must have been like between Peter and Jesus. John records some of it for us, and they have a pretty straightforward dialogue about friendship and love and mercy and ministry. And that must have been a great encouragement to Peter as he becomes the leader of the nascent church with all those who both inside the church and outside the church will um, challenge him in so many ways. But Peter encounters God's great mercy for him in the forgiveness of his denying ever knowing Jesus. We also heard this week the story of the disciples on the road, uh, the, the people on the way to Emmaus, um, who had given up too soon on that night of uh, the crucifixion and had found themselves on the way home. They had turned their back on the city of Jerusalem and were leaving. Um, Jesus comes to them. They think he's a stranger on the road, which I find remarkable because have you ever noticed that sometimes it's so easy to share your heart with a stranger? You maybe can't talk about your life with those who know you with a stranger on a plane or on a bus or anywhere. You can sort of start talking. And they start talking to this person who they believe would be an uninvolved uh, individual about all their hopes and dreams in this young prophet from Galilee, what he was going to do for them, and how everything that happened had crushed those dreams, and how in the darkness they're heading home until, until, in his mercy and their suffering, Jesus begins to open the scriptures for them. And when he breaks the bread, they recognize him. And their hearts are set on flame to the point that they have to rush back to Jerusalem to tell the apostles what they've encountered. And of course, Jesus appears to the disciples as a group in the upper room, as we hear today in John's uh, encounter, John's record of this necessary encounter. Um, none of them, none of them had been totally loyal to their friend. And now their life has become one of living in fear suffering in fear, uh, locked away, hiding, not sure what's going to happen to them. Um, in spite of the many parables about the kingdom of God, they did not know what it was. Um, even when Jesus gave them private tutoring lessons about what it was supposed to be like, they didn't get it. Though Jesus had proclaimed a kingdom in which all would be welcomed and uh, the greatest would be least, they had wanted to exclude people, and they had argued about which one of them was the greatest and the most important. I really think in the story we hear today, Jesus' appearance really is what I would call Easter's living legacy. Peace is spoken. A mission is given. A living, breathing spirit is given to the apostles. Forgiveness is offered. Faith is offered. Mercy is offered in that upper room on that first Easter night. Without all those things, the apostles would likely continue to repeat the same mistakes they'd always repeated if they'd even ever come out of that upper room, right? And of course, there's that extra appearance we hear about today to Thomas, to meet him where he is at in his grief, in his loss, unable to believe that someone's come back to life. I mean, how could you? You've never had a resurrected person before. You don't have a category, a way of understanding it. How do you grasp it at all? 
Thomas who says he's got the purity of heart and the integrity, I will not believe what I will not believe. I just won't say it. But when he's in, Thomas is in all the way. My Lord and my God, the only person in John's gospel to get it, to put it all together who he is. He makes the full profession of faith that John's been trying to get his readers to make all the way along. John told us in the beginning that the word was God, and Thomas is the one who finally realizes that. So we've heard all week wondrous stories of the appearances of Jesus to people, and they've all been different because each person is different, each person is unique, but all of them, all of us, in some way need mercy, the divine mercy we celebrate today. I love the line at the end of the gospel. John tells us, Jesus did many other things not recorded. I'd love to know what some of those were. I find that so intriguing, many other things not recorded. But I am convinced, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Jesus does continue to do many things and to make himself known in mercy uniquely to each unique person. And then each unique person makes the response to that experience. Nobody can do our believing for us. Just like Thomas, we decide if we will believe or we will not believe. We make the decision. What do these stories, this apostolic witness, mean to us of an empty tomb? How significant is the risen Christ in our life? What role do we allow that Holy Spirit that dwells within us to play for us? How seriously do we take God at his word? What is my experience, your experience, of his mercy, his compassion, coming uniquely to you in the suffering you've endured in your life? How we have experienced the risen Christ in our lives can truly be counted among those many other things that John did not record. The gospel continues to unfold. But that doesn't mean, just because they're not recorded, that our experiences of Jesus shouldn't be shared, as the gospel author stories have done for us, so that we might have a starting point to understand Jesus. I mean, how are people to come to know the risen Christ if they don't hear from us who know him, so they know what to start looking for? How are people to encounter Jesus in their lives if those of us who have encountered him don't share with them what that experience is like? How are they to understand what might be unfolding in their life if we don't help them interpret what Jesus is doing? Today, as you go out on this Divine Mercy Sunday, you really don't need to speak with people about how the crazy priest threw water all over us. You don't need to talk about the scriptures you heard today. If there's anything you want to take from the homily, you don't need to talk to people about that. What you do need to do is tell people what the Lord in his mercy has done for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of our Mass, there were more than 1,500 people here exactly a week ago at this hour. They're probably not here today because, unlike you and me, they don't recognize that mercy, that compassion, and the infinite change it makes in life forever. We are the many stories not recorded that the world needs to hear about. The way people come to Jesus and Jesus comes to them is one by one, as we dare to share with others how God in his mercy has come to our salvation. Please stand.
My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, that is, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we've been buried with Christ in baptism so that we might walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that we are in the Easter season, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace for eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. And on this octave day of Easter, let us bring before our loving God our needs in prayer. For the church, that the divine mercy and peace the church receives from Christ be the gift it offers to all, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. For the world that the nation see in the Christian community a model of sincerity, forgiveness, and sharing that is worth imitating. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed, afflicted, or in need, that the Holy Spirit breathe the power to forgive into those wounded by conflict, crime, or betrayal. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. For our newly baptized and confirmed, that they continue to encounter Christ and to probe his meaning in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we live out of faith that glorifies God and invites others to believe, especially those inquiring into our Catholic faith. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer this day are in, and are in need of compassion, for those who are in hospitals or skilled nursing facilities, for all who are having medical emergencies, who live with chronic pain and terminal illness, for those who suffer from war, abuse, and violence of any kind, for those who suffer because of earthquakes, floods, volcanoes, or any other natural disaster, and for all those good people on the front line seeking to bring hope and healing to all who are in need, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed, for those who have died alone and have no one to pray for them, for the members of our families and friends who have passed away, for those who will die this day, and all who grieve the loss of loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. And 
in the silence of our hearts, wherever we may be, let us each bring before our loving and compassionate God our own needs and intentions this day. For all our prayers, and for that member of our community most in need of our prayer today, we pray to the Lord. God of divine mercy, hear our prayers on this joyful Easter day. Grant us all things for your glory and our salvation through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just a brief note for you. Normally on the first weekend of the month, we have our Rise and Build collection. We didn't do that last weekend because it was Easter Sunday. Um, so we will be having that collection today, right? We've got that one today. There's so many coming up, right? Yes, okay, I've got that correct. Um, so Divine, Divine Mercy Sunday, yes, Arise and Build. As always, we thank you for your generous support of our work to improve and remodel our facilities.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands with praise and glory of his name for our good and Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. <laughs> but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of Easter peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to join with me now in praying our act of spiritual communion with those worshiping with us online this Easter day. I will lead the prayer and invite you to simply repeat after me. My Jesus. My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment. A couple quick announcements for you. Um, the first is uh, the Bishop's Appeal has arrived. You know, every year our diocese has a Bishop's Appeal to support more than 70 different ministries that the Bishop's Office is responsible for. Most of them are ministries that no parish can provide for itself. Um, I've put a letter in the bulletin for you this weekend. I ask you to please read that. Next weekend, we will take up a collection for the Bishop's Appeal to accept your one-time donations, or there are pledge envelopes in the back of the church you can pick up. Um, one of the reasons I'm a little off is that, like I said, normally we have a rise and build on the first weekend, which we didn't do. And also, St. Vincent de Paul, we usually have that collection on the fifth weekend of the month, which last month was um, Palm Sunday, so we didn't do that collection either. So we had a rise and build today. We'll have Bishop's Appeal next weekend, and the weekend after that, we will do our St. Vincent de Paul collection because they need our support as well. But I do invite you to please read the information I provide in the bulletin for the Bishop's Appeal and prayerfully make a decision. You can, of course, support the appeal online as well, and all that information is there for you. So I thank you for your attention to that. I noticed before Mass began there are a few little page-a-day books for the Easter season. Uh, prayer reflections still in the back of the church. If you do not have one of those and would like one, please pick them up. They're going pretty quick. Um, I'd like to invite Deacon Gary to come forward, our Director of Liturgy, who knocked himself out over the Triduum to make everything happen, but he's got a special presentation today. Thank you, Father Mark. Thank you, everyone. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. As Father Mark mentioned, uh, Deacon Gary, and several years ago, Father Paul and I were putting our heads together, kind of wanting to come up with a way to acknowledge altar servers who have performed exceptionally. These altar servers have excelled in technical skills as well as leadership. And today, we are going to promote Amelia Newell. Please come forward. Amelia comes to, she's, Well, Amelia's only been with us for a short minute. She's got an experience at her previous parish. And sometimes, maybe more often than not, it's more difficult to transition from what you've learned at one parish to what we're doing at, a, at another parish. And Amelia has just done a splendid job at that. So thank you very much. You've been wonderful. All of the LCs speak highly of you. I've seen you work and I'm very proud of you. So Amelia, please wear this crucifix every time you serve as a reminder of your commitment to continue serving and in your leadership role. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was, I, when we were getting ready for Mass Day, I was telling Amelia, okay, I need the red ribbon for the water bus, I need the blue and purple ribbon for, the, for this, I need the white ribbon for that. And she's like, okay, boop, 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 everything I needed right here, which is, most priests don't know the way around this the way she does, so that's, that's really wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for your ministry today, and to all our ministers, to our musicians, thank you so much. Our um, lectors, our Eucharistic ministers, our greeters, our rushers, our liturgy coordinators, thank you to all of you for helping Mass go so smoothly. Those of you online, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's great to have you with us wherever you are. We are very much aware that you're part of our community and we love having you pray with us. To all of you present, thank you as well for coming out this joyful Easter day. Um, as we've said so many times, our prayer really is enriched by every member of the body of Christ who joins us. If you were here last weekend when the place was packed, you felt the difference that makes. Um, so your presence makes a difference in our prayer, and we're very grateful to have you here. Uh, please know that whether online or in person, you're always welcome here at the Catholic Community of Pleasanton. And the Lord is with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, 
be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessed of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down in you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. People of God, see the morning is new.